Hey guys, so I'm taking on this challenge and it's to get this boat motor going. It's a 40 horsepower 2001 uh, Yamaha outboard and two stroke and it's basically the write off by the boat mechanic. Um, I, I bought it just as a bit of a challenge, see if I can get it going. Um, they basically said the motor was worth nothing and it's um, not worth repair. Um, but that all depends on how much labor costs you're putting into it. And obviously it's probably not gonna be worth repair uh, at a boat mechanic to pay a boat mechanic to do it because it might cost two, three, four thousand dollars to do it. But um, generally the, the motor is in excellent condition even for 21 years old. So I thought I'll give myself a challenge. Let's see if we can get this thing going. The main thing with this motor is that it's only done about 140 hours, but it has got salt buildup inside internally and a small hole has gone to the outside of the block. Uh, leaking water to the bottom. So yeah, how much can you do with these to get it fixed? And can you fix it or is it just not worth it? So the boat mechanic had done a lot of things to this motor just before I got it. He'd done the gearbox oil fresh, he'd put a new water pump in it, uh, service the carbies right through, put a new thermostat in it. Um, so I'm going to go over and check a couple of things, mainly the carbies. What I'm going to show is there's a few things that they haven't done quite as well as what I might have done um, or you might have done uh, because it all comes down to hourly rate and how much the customer is prepared to pay and that's why these things can blow right out if they wanted to fix this motor uh, like I'm going to try to do. The gasket for the thermostat wasn't replaced, even though the mechanic did it. 
Uh, you can see that it's the original gasket. It's a 20 year old gasket with the paint still on it. So it's put a new thermostat in, but not a new gasket. Whereas I've gone and put a new gasket in as well and all new gaskets for the head. So when you leave your motor standing idle for months or weeks, the water is just laying in the bottom of the cylinder block, uh, around the cylinders, and it's just building up with um, salt as it just leaches away. Salt's coming down, and mine was filled up right through here with ha that hard salt. Unless it's getting flushed regularly, it's going to corrode up. It's going to fill up salt. Just going out where the water travels in the outboard motors. So it comes in through all the different inlets. There's seven on the 40, 50 horsepower. Um, they, they flow in, fill up all around the cylinder. And then once it gets to the head, Once it fills up all around the cylinder, it comes in through this little port here, fills up the head as well, all the way to the top, and then you've got this port here that it goes into the thermostat housing, in through the first thermostat housing hole, and once it's hot enough, the thermostat activates through here, and then comes out of this little outlet here, which as you can see then flows down the head and on, on this one it was very clean down through this one and, the, and you've got to ask yourself why. Once the thermostat allows the water to come out, it just flows gravity down through to the bottom. This is to the final porthole here and when we go back to the block, that final port, this one here, we're going to fill it up with water and you'll see where it goes to. It's all just gravity then once it gets out of the thermostat housing. So it just flows down the top of the head plate and goes out that bottom hole there. Where does it go? Straight out the exhaust. So you can see why the outlet ports are very clean and the, the cylinder ports and the head ports here were very dirty because they were holding water and the cylinders hold water when the engine stopped. But on this side here, it's just flowing straight out the bottom of the motor and it's not staying in there at all for any period of time at all. So it's gone. This side here holds water and in the cylinders, the cylinders hold water for periods of time, which is why you've got to flush them. Minutes, four or five minutes, you've got to let the engine heat up to operating temperature so that the water then cycles through the thermostat. You can't just flush your motor for one minute after you get back and think that it's flushed the motor. You've got to get the salt water right out of there. So you've got to let that heat up, cycle through the thermostat, and then flow out um, and clean the entire engine once it's flowing through the thermostat. Even if there's water coming out the telltale, out, which is what you normally see coming out of the motor down through here, that doesn't mean the water is getting into the cylinders because that telltale comes out before it actually flows into the cylinders. So we, you need to be sure, and sometimes there's blockages in the cylinders like we had, and that is going to actually uh, cause the motor to overheat, even though the telltale is flowing plenty of water out, outside the motor for you to see. Uh, that only means that there's pressure into this water panel. So as you can see here, I've just sealed up the block so I can fill it up with water. And I've filled it up and it's just holding water. As high as we fill it, it's holding water. So it's not draining away or anything. So whatever stays in this block, uh, if it's salty water or if it's clean water, that stays there until the next time you use the, the motor. And so you want to be sure it's clean. You want to be sure you've flushed it so the thermostat opens like we've talked about and make sure it's flush clean water through because it holds it until the next time it's used. And no wonder that there's a lot of engines after 10, 15 years, they've got this salt build up and it, you really need to take the head off, I believe, every you know, 10, 15 years and give it a good polish inside and make sure there's no build up. So we're gonna crank it guys and we're gonna hopefully see the water coming out of the inlets. Okay, crank it and checking the bottom cylinder. So got some wax and grease remover. We just got all these prepped up now. Really just give them a good clean, make sure that it's ready for the gaskets to go on with no oils, no two-stroke oils, nothing else, no grease or anything. Just get them all cleaned up nicely, ready to fit the gaskets.
good thing is that the head on the later ones has got all the numbers for torquing them up and it's got the torque settings there as well for the uh, M6 and M8 head bolts, which makes it a bit easier. Wax and grease remover, just to clean all in around the areas. We're going to put new gaskets, head gasket and so on. Also in around here, I'm going to put some sealer. So I just want it really clean with some wax and grease remover inside there. Clean all the surfaces. We've got the nice new head gasket ready to go on. Everything's looking really nice. We're just going to put a little bit of sealer around the bottom of the cylinder block where the corrosion was the worst, just to give it an absolute double protection to seal around the outer case in the future. So we want to get 10, 15 years out of this at least. So I just think to put a little bit extra heat proof sealant and we'll give the gasket just that little bit better chance around the bottom areas where it corrodes up more to be fully sealed and to be a perfect seal so that we never have any problems in the next 10, 15 years and this doesn't have to come off again. So I've just got a smear of grease on the end of those bolts, those first couple of bolts. They've got to go into the head before the head can go in place. Uh, otherwise they won't get past this little um, piece here. So put them in first, the two bottom ones first, and then we'll work our way up, put the other head bolts in the rest, and then we'll torque them up. So we've just torqued up the four center bolts. They're only an M6 bolt, and they go up to 7.8 newton meters, and now we're about to torque up all the outer bolts at 29.4 newton meters. We're just gonna do a compression test now, just before we started. Okay. Okay, that, that's top cylinder. Second cylinder. Bottom, third cylinder. Okay, so they're all pretty much uh, bang on, uh, the same sort of PSI, so um, yeah, we're going to start it. Okay, so we're going to start it, see how she runs. So there we have it guys, the challenge is completed, and yes, we got it there, we got it running. So if you want to do it yourself, Go for it. If you want to pay a mechanic 20 or 30 hours labor, it's probably not going to be viable, that's for sure. But uh, if you've got an old motor, you might be able to get it going. Enjoy your boating. <laughs>